Imagine you were in your room enjoying your favorite meat, watching your favorite series. Soon a beam of sunlight flashed on your face, and you realized it was a dream and you could never enjoy the meal like before. Let's see the major factors that resulted in the cattle supply drop. The meat industry forecast for 2023 identified that the meat supply has significantly decreased and hence higher prices for meat. Until 2023, consumer spending is increasing at a rate of 4%, and according to the reports, an average American consumes 5.6% less beef due to shortages. And if you want to eat meat, try to shelf some. Due to the shortages, the markets expect a 20% price hike for beef in 2023. There are several reasons for the meat shortage, and one among them is the closure of meat processing plants due to the potential outbreak of COVID-19, which caused a slowdown in production. Moreover, the pandemic decreased the total herd size since farmers started selling cows at a higher rate than usual, which was done to take advantage of the prices. As the businesses and restaurants were closed, the demand for home food from grocery stores increased, and the meat production facilities were affected when the virus spread among the workers. Hence, there was less meat on the shelves. Since fewer meat animals were harvested and there was less demand for livestock, farmers had excess stock and decreased demand for livestock led to economic issues. Until February 2020, everything was going smoothly. And then in March, the pandemic hit and dramatically reversed consumer spending on food. Food service suppliers faced huge order cancellations, and they were left with excess stock and couldn't easily be redirected to consumers due to package size mismatches. Excess shelves for storage were not available in most homes, and creating consumer-friendly formats required additional space and time. However, managers with a clear understanding of the pandemic will decide whether to wait or invest in long-term consumer spending shifts and depend on how quickly they expect return during the pandemics. The meat shortage will greatly impact the meat industry as the producers must adjust their operations to meet the demand. The operations may include reducing the margins and shifting to other kinds of meat. Furthermore, the meat shortage may lead to the closure of small, local meat producers due to heavy competition. We've all heard the news of over 1 lakh small farms closed in America, and the current situation could lead to more closures. The meat shortage highlights the importance of having a reliable and sustainable supply of meat sources, and we cannot sit simply in our homes and hope to eat our favorite meats as the farms are closing. It's time for the industry to change, and consumers should start trusting their food again. The rapid response of food supply chains has shown the importance of an open and predictable international trading environment that allows the firm to have new sources of supply when existing sources are compromised. The pandemic led to disruptions in the process and industry due to social distancing, labor shortages, and lockdowns done to reduce the impact of viruses. Moreover, COVID-19 clusters have been found in several meat processing plants, and meat processing appears to be more sensitive than other types of food processing because of labor-intensive operations. On the other hand, the automotive industries, which are less labor-focused, have not experienced a similar situation to the meat processing industries. In the United States, cattle and pig slaughter fell by 40% in April compared to the same period in 2019. Moreover, low demand from meat processors left the meat producers with mature animals and animals euthanized to prevent overcrowding. The effects of the closure of meat processing industries were highly pronounced in North America due to the concentrated nature of the industry, and in the United States, around 60% of meat comes from 15 plants. Another important factor is climate change, which is a major concern and evidence shows that there will be impacts throughout the supply chain from farm production to processing operations like storage, transport, retailing, and consumption of livestock products. Climate-related impacts are heavy in areas that are already hot and have limited resources for adaptation. Global warming and the associated changes in climate variables affect feed, water, animal health, and production. Livestock products contribute 15%, 31% of global per capita and calorie capital supply, and about 30 and 6% of global meat and milk production originates from grazing systems. The livestock also contributes to drought power as a means of transportation and a source of nutrition for poor soils, which further contributes to well-being of resilience of many communities. Major greenhouse gas emissions like carbon dioxide and tropospheric ozone can impact the livestock food supply chain. Moreover, variations in temperature and precipitation, sea level rise, increased risk, and frequency of other events also impacted livestock production. Moreover, there were environmental policy changes, and many countries were implementing policies to reduce the climate impact of meat production, thereby reducing the meat supply. Hence, according to the reports, there will also be a shortage of quality meat, and in the coming days, prime and choice beef options may not be available. Even if the options are available, we will have to pay higher premium than other grades of beef. Regions that are facing water scarcity will harm livestock production. However, regions on high latitudes have good yield due to reduced cold stress and longer growing seasons. 
Decreased feed availability, diseases, and mortality from extreme weather conditions negatively impact animal production and life expectancy. However, geographies with cold weather and warm temperatures can reduce cold animal stress and maintenance energy requirements. Consumer demand has seen rapid and unprecedented shifts during the pandemic, and the sales of takeaway collapsed. Restaurant reservations declined sharply in March and closer to zero by March as lockdowns were enforced. However, the retail demand rose, and packaged and frozen food sales increased dramatically. Weekly frozen food sales were reported at 63% higher than the previous year in France. Following the initial spike, the retail demand for fresh and packaged foods has remained 15-20% to 20% higher than usual. In addition to logistical challenges, household consumption patterns at home and takeaways differ. For instance, food away from home tends to use more cheese than at home and involves more expensive meat cuts. Even though similar products are consumed, products sold to restaurants cannot always be sold to retailers without incurring extra charges. Furthermore, retailers also have different quality expectations and other requirements. Since hotels and restaurants can be important suppliers to food banks, their closures significantly reduce supply to these outlets with demand for their services increased. The risk to food security does not come from disruptions along the supply chains, but rather from the effects of COVID-19 on jobs and livelihood. Moreover, in underdeveloped countries, the pandemic led to an increase in poverty and hunger. The World Food Program reports that people in acute security can double to 265 million in 2020 unless swift action is taken. However, within developed countries, vulnerable groups such as the elderly, ill, and poor households are at risk. The pandemic has created a pre-existing gap in social protection systems. Although the food supply chains in developed countries have shown resilience toward COVID-19, policymakers' responses have helped facilitate the functioning of supply chains and avoid the costly mistake that took place during the 2007-08 food crisis. Despite a general trend of using limited inventory, people started shelving safety stocks in response to the demand spike. In addition, retailers and food processors took several measures against COVID-19. They increased the factory operating hours, hired additional employees, and reduced the variety of products to focus on the most popular ones, hence reducing time and costs for manufacturers and simplifying inventory management for retailers. Supply chain actors have also expanded to a new delivery method called Click and Expand Services in Online Sales. Restaurants started switching to takeout delivery with some offering grocery-like services, where raw materials were served instead of meals. Initiatives also emerged to link farmers and restaurants directly to food banks. Although the policymakers identified the major problems related to the pandemic, some bottlenecks remain and require attention, including the shutdown of meat processing plants. Although the bottlenecks share the common factor of being unable to overcome in the short run, as the pandemic spread in Latin America, new risks to global supply chain have also emerged. However, the biggest risk was not with food availability, but with consumers' access to food. As lockdown and following the recession, millions lost their livelihood and experienced a severe drop in their income. Social safety nets and assistance programs must be conducted to avoid increasing hunger and food availability. It's time for us to conclude. Hope you all enjoyed the video and don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel. So see you guys in another one and have a nice day.